Okay, so my favorite episode of The Boss Lady is the one that featured that lady who had that interior decor, like the amazing, amazing, you know what I mean? Like the lady who had the ornaments, who had battled cancer, who at some point lost everything and then managed to rise from the ashes. That episode captivated me so much, like I, it really touched me. Her story was beautiful. I think nothing is easy in life, but persistence and inner strength and determination, I think is quite a good cocktail to have. And this is my vision. I could easily have said, fine, you know, things are not working out. Financially, it's challenging have here. Have you ever been at that point where sometimes it, things are not working out? Oh, absolutely. Totally, I have. And I'll share that story with you. I'll give you one example. And um, I, in 2006, I became very, very sick. And actually, I've also got a little bit of background in nutrition. So I know my body and I knew something was terribly wrong. I kept going to the doctor and I said, look, please, Check, check me again, something is wrong. I did four times and I did, had four DNCs within three months, which is hectic. And long story short, I ended up jumping on a plane, going to South Africa to seek the best medical uh, specialist I could find. And I was diagnosed with almost stage four cancer. I had two massive tumors in my uterus that had spread to my lungs. I couldn't walk 50 meters without coughing blood. So the oncologist who was amazing, I had a woman, she said, Lisa, you are too weak for me to give you um, to operate and remove the tumor in your lungs before it could actually spread to the brain. So she seeked permission from the Ministry of Health in South Africa to administrate the strongest chemo in the world. And that is like is behind lock and key. So she got that written permission, got that chemo, and I was put into hospital Monday night. And I remember Chero Tich, Chero's mom was the, the the Kenya ambassador in Pretoria and Jero drove up and sat next to me and held my hand. And that was the last I remembered. I hemorrhaged into my lungs. I had seven blood transfusions, two of which my body rejected. And I, I woke up days later in a tiny corner in ICU. So literally my body collapsed and I stopped breathing. But they managed to revive me. So I was in South Africa for three months having weekly chemo. And I told the doctors when they gave me the list of all the side effects, I have no time to be sick. I've got places to go, people to see, things to do. So let's get on with this little journey, Twendekazi. And I came back. So the story was that I still had a gal. I lived in a gallery in Nairobi called the Home Gallery. And I had um, an assistant lady working for me and an accountant. Nobody ever thought that I would pull through and survive that cancer journey. Stage four, I know. So, Exactly, and actually statistics show that only 3% of anybody who has had that strong chemo survive. So yeah, I'm a pretty good survivor. Look at me now, 3%, here we are. The point was that, um, you know, uh, friends of mine came down with my company checkbooks, bills had to be paid, um, suppliers had to be paid, so I didn't know who or what, I was just, you know, yeah in bed attached to every single tube that there was in that hospital almost and that was my life for five weeks so i was signing blank checks and my friends took the checks book back to nairobi to give to my accountant only to find out you know basically a year later when i had got my strength back and i started working a little bit again i had realized this accountant had written every single check to himself cleaned me out completely he never thought i would survive he bought land in Masaini. He, whatever he did, um, I mean, we managed finally, long story, we arrested him, we went through courts, but the usual story, files get lost. And at the end of it, you know what? I believe in karma. It is. Uh, I believe in karma. So do you know what? I'm not going to waste my energy chasing a trail that I'm never going to find the end of. So let it be. He knows what he's done. And literally, I just have had to work from scratch, build everything how, up again. And how, how was that? experience you're just coming from chemo you have to start afresh you the person who you were believing in and trusting in has, has cleaned you out completely completely yes so how was that that awful feeling that you know somebody you trust during your weakest moment goes behind your back and does this to you and knows that you know i'm a single mom with two kids i still have to school to think about um, bills have to be paid. 
I was even fighting, you know, trying to, first of all, I'm trying to, to have inner strength to pull through my health. And on top of that, I had to fight with the medical company that I had a medical cover with because they said, no, we're not going to pay your bills anymore. I mean, why do you have a medical company? So, you know, there was a lot of obstacles. I was fighting all at the same time. And you think, these are challenges that are here to test you. So I, I embrace those challenges and say, okay, we are going to pull through this. So a lot of hard work again, a lot of hard work. How did you rebound? Just working hard. Nothing happens without hard work. Seven days a week, you work morning until evening. Evenings often, you know, having drinks, invita inviting guests over. You're selling at hours where, where you know people have time to come over. They're after work, they would love a glass of wine. They're chilled now. Let's shop. Mm. And I think a lot of people were very, very supportive of me during that time. Such passion does really go deep. It is no wonder her success. And I wondered who has been her biggest clients. With Tom Nashkai, Coca-Cola is being one of them when they first um, did their offices up in Upper Hill. The huge East African regional office was there. I came in and decorated the office with a lot of tribal art, a lot of African art, including paintings, which still is there today. Wow. And generally when the, the president of Coca-Cola has his office there, they will call me and say, okay, this gentleman would like to meet you. I go in and suss him out. What's his look? What's his feel? What does he want? And then decorated it in his style. Um, the US Embassy, when they built their new embassy off UN Avenue, I decorated it with African art. Wow. So I met the team from DC and worked with them. So America meets Africa. And we've got beautiful, beautiful arts in that embassy today, which is really lovely. Sadly, you know, unless you have a reason to go for a meeting inside the embassy, you, you will you not be able to exactly. see it. <laughs> I was going to say, well, but we will hardly ever get the chance to see it. Well, we can discuss, I mean, certain pieces, for example, here, these are beautiful, what do you think, a bracelet? Is it? It is. So it's actually known as a wrist cuff. So it's from the Tutsi really? in, Rwanda. in Rwanda. And these ones basically are used as on your wrist. So when they're shooting bow and arrows, uh -huh. it protects the backlash of the bow in case it sometimes breaks. So they're Tutsi wrist cuffs. And that's what they're actually known as. And look at them, beautifully architectural forms. So wood inlaid with a little bit of copper. Mm. And that's the beautiful thing about all of these pieces. This is a Benin bronze um, head of a queen uh, from Benin, of course, up in West Africa. And this little elephant is actually um, South Sudanese. So it's wood and adored with beads and inlaid with a little bit of aluminium. So all of these are classical tribal pieces from our continent pieces that were made for a reason and a function and tell a story. There are so many amazing female ambassadors in Kenya, 2019, and many of these ladies are photographers, they're independent, and they're part of this through the diplomat lens. So because they've supported us, we, some of them are on our committee that we have put together, and um, that was the reason why. Let's celebrate women. All right, Lisa, maybe you can, um just mention um, where the idea came from and who who are your supporters who are the people behind it well the idea came from um, one of our ambassadors who is a keen avid photographer and asked me to put a little exhibition together for a worthy cause mm -hmm. and the country he had come from wasn't very wasn't a big country at all so I said look Let's make noise. Let's take it to a different level. We are in Kenya. Mm -hmm. There are about a hundred embassies, high commissioners here. Mm -hmm. Let's pull them all together. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what we did. Mm -hmm. 